So you just got yourself a brand new PlayStation 4 and you want to do some local multiplayer, say with your brother, sister, mom, dad, friend, whoever wants to play with you, but you don't have two controllers, you only have the one that came with the PlayStation. And as you're looking through the store, you do notice that the controllers can be very expensive. They're almost the same price as a game. This is where the Lilyhood Double Shock 4 controller comes in. It's a wired controller that I got off of Amazon. It's very good, it has most of the features that the Dual Shock 4 has. So I'm gonna go over the features with you, show you some gameplay, and give you my overall recommendation of this product. So right now I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two controllers here. On the right, we have the Dual Shock 4, the official PlayStation 4 controller. And on the left, we have the Lilyhood Double Shock 4 controller. So I'm gonna pick up the Lilyhood one first. So right here, we have the Lilyhood controller, and it has basically all the buttons you would need to play PlayStation games. The, the thumbsticks click in, triggers are there, L1, R2. Now, one thing with this is the D-pad actually feels really good. I actually prefer it over that controller right there. It, it feels very good in my hands and it's on the central pivot point, which is nice. Also, we have the share and the option buttons. They function as they normally would. Now, the touchpad, this isn't really a touchpad. It's just one giant button. It just clicks in like that, and there is no touchpad feature whatsoever. This is the light bar here. It actually lights up to, um, I think it's only yellow it lights up to. Also, this is the home button, and yeah, it feels, feels pretty nice. Also, another advantage this has over the regular PlayStation controller is that these are actually rubberized grips, so it feels very good to hold in your hands. So it feels like you have a good grip on there all the time. Also, this has a rumble feature and it's, it feels pretty good. It's not the strongest rumble motor, but again, it does the job. And the other thing here is the cord. It's a non-detachable USB-A controller, uh, cord I mean. So it's six feet, which isn't the longest. I would have probably preferred 10 feet, but you can always get like a cheap extension cable and just plug it into your PlayStation like that. Now taking a look at the official controller, we have again, same, same button layout basically. Except the uh, light bars right there, micro USB for charging, it is wireless. Touchpad, yeah, again, this controller still feels pretty good, but I still prefer that D-pad over this D-pad. Yeah, so every, everything feels nice and responsive. Quality feels good, it should, it's an official Sony product. And again, with this controller, the, the buttons actually feel really good. The, the controller is very like hard, the plastic's well made. So it's not like, yeah, it's not gonna break on you easily. So right now I have the controller plugged into the PlayStation directly and the D-pad's working, the analog sticks working. I'm gonna go quickly into settings, show you the options that comes with it. So basically I forgot to mention that there is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in this. So basically you cannot use any, blue, any audio at all. So no headset, no voice chat. You're gonna have to use your official PlayStation controller for that, but you'll probably be using this as a second player. So really not a big deal. I also want to show you this touchpad, which is not really a touchpad, it's literally just a button. So I'm moving my finger around, nothing's happening. It's supposed to move the cursor around on the keyboard, but if I just click on it, it's just gonna do it as like a regular input. So yeah, so this touchpad is not a touchpad at all, it's just a one giant button. So just keep in mind if you're gonna buy this controller. So I'm gonna go back, we're gonna play a little bit of Spider-Man. Show you all the buttons in working order and give you my overall thoughts of this controller. So here's some Spider-Man. We got the uh, Sam Raimi uh, suit on, my favorite suit probably. I probably will never use another suit in this game. But anyways, let's get to the gameplay. So I'm going to do a little bit of a crime scene fight here, show you every button in working order. And let's get into it. Here we go. Everything's very responsive. I, I'm not missing a beat here. Good, so I defeated them, and let's do a bit of web sling. Okay. So this controller feels really good. Like if if your PlayStation 4 controller ever craps out, like this is pretty solid option for and for thirty dollars, I'm like this is this is more than enough than what you need. So that was my review of the Lilyhood Double Shock 4 PlayStation 4 controller. It's a great little third party option if you want to have a second player and it doesn't break the bank either. It's about 30 Kane dollars, 25 US dollars if my conversion rate's uh, correct there. So I'll leave links in the description to add to the Amazon listing so you can get one for yourself. This is Super Andrew 64. If you like what you saw, please consider giving me a subscription. I'd really appreciate it. Drop a comment. I want to know what you think about this controller and leave a like if you obviously liked my video. 
And also, I'm wearing a Nintendo Direct t-shirt. Please check out my friend's channel. He does daily content. He does live streams a whole bunch. And I'd really appreciate if you check out his channel. I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. So this is Super Andrew 64 signing off. Have yourselves a one-up day. Mm -hmm.